Hello, beer friends. Uh, today we're going to be breaking down everything you need to know about ascorbic acid. It's something that we've plugged on this channel quite a bit, and so uh, today I'm just going to kind of break down what it does, why it works, how it works, and most importantly, why we use it the way we do, and how it can be used in your homebrew at home. So first of all, for those of you who don't know, ascorbic acid is a powerful antioxidant. It's actually one of two different forms of vitamin C, and no, it's not the kind of vitamin C that's in your pills. Um, although it works the exact same as it would in your body. To give you the quick and dirty, we use ascorbic acid as a beer stabilizer, and that is especially important in today's world of hazy IPAs where beers are hyper susceptible to oxidation. The two main types of beers that are more prone to oxidation are hazy IPAs or anything that's dry hopped really, and anything with a heavy crystal malt load, which as a lot of you know, we don't really do. We kind of avoid crystal malts anyway. Uh, but for those of you who have crystal malts in your beer, uh, ascorbic acid can be something that kind of helps it from becoming cloyingly sweet. First, let's start with how we like to use ascorbic acid. We use ascorbic acid three to five grams and we do it in the mash. There are a lot of credible breweries who do have success using ascorbic acid when it comes to packaging. And this is especially with hazy IPAs and especially if their packaging has some sort of an open system to it. So i.e. they know they're gonna be letting some oxygen in and they wanna use ascorbic acid as an oxygen scrubber before it goes into cans or whatever. And this works for a lot of them. One of the biggest pushbacks I get on ascorbic acid comes from people who use ascorbic acid when packaging. There's been some studies in the wine world that actually say ascorbic acid can promote oxidation when used in absence of sulfur, and that's true. The reason that this isn't very important for a lot of beer makers is because there's a lot more natural sulfur in grains, and so there's going to be some free sulfur left in the beer going into package. In the wine world, it's also usually not an issue because a lot of times wineries will use some sort of sulfites, um, so that's kind of why it's a mixed thing. But for those of you who are just kind of wondering, don't worry about using Camden tablets or metabisulfites when you're using it, if you use it for package. Now to reiterate, if you're using ascorbic acid in package, it's really only important for things like hazy IPAs and all you're doing at that point is using it as an oxygen scrubber to get oxygen out of your bottles, cans, kegs, whatever. We like to use ascorbic acid in the mash. And the reason for that is because we're actually creating different compounds throughout the mashing and boiling process that make your beer more shelf stable. Specifically, ascorbic acid will lead to a number of reactions throughout those stages that create compounds that would normally come from doing a decoction mash or a really long boil that are known to make historical styles very, very shelf stable. In this way, you can basically get a really, really shelf stable beer with a short boil time and a relatively modern process. The reason that's important, uh, obviously with hazy IPAs, you don't wanna be doing long boils and breaking out a lot of certain proteins. And so uh, by adding ascorbic acid, you can kind of skip a couple steps and still make sure that your beer is going to survive packaging um, in kegs or bottles, and it'll still be good three weeks down the road, even if your techniques aren't 100% perfect. Well, that said, let's break down what compounds we're really looking for when it comes to ascorbic acid in the mash, and therefore, uh, present throughout the mash and boiling process. Um, ascorbic acid, by the way, will break down during the boiling process, but by then it's done its job. So that all said, let's kind of break down the science of what's going on in the mash and why we find that it's a really, really effective place to use ascorbic acid. There's two different reasons that we're using ascorbic acid. One is to reduce reactive oxidant species. Reactive oxidant species are gonna be naturally present in grain and they grow as grain ages, especially if it's aged in moist or warm conditions. Uh, these reactive oxi oxidant species can basically be precursors to degradation of your beer down the road. And so by eliminating those, you're kind of stopping your beer's shelf life from being short early on. The other thing ascorbic acid does is actually leads to the creation of reductones and edendiols, which are powerful antioxidants in their own right and work very, very differently than how ascorbic acid does by itself. Uh, these reductones and edendiols basically are electron acceptors and they prevent uh, other degradative compounds from being created uh, as the beer is stored and aged. I wanna get this right, and so I'm gonna give an exact quote from one of the articles that I commonly cite when people are asking about what uh, the Maillard reaction and ascorbic acid kind of have to do with one another. Beer reductones and the Maillard reaction products play an important role in beer aging to be natural electron donors. The degradation products of sugars contribute to non-oxidative browning amino acids and proteins by rearranging and eliminating pathways which generate deoxycarbonyl compounds such as uh, deoxyglucosone and methylglucoxal, methylglyoxal, and methylglyoxal. 
for those of you who want us to dig more into the science of this, um, I honestly don't know most of those compounds and what exactly they do in beer. I have just read through these articles and kind of gotten the gist of it. So if you want me to dig in, I'm happy to do so. I'll link all these articles below. And the long story short in this whole thing, we like to use our ascorbic acid in mash. Uh, a lot of commercial breweries will use their, their ascorbic acid in package. And if you are doing either one, three to five grams is plenty for a five gallon batch. And um, it's really hard to overdo. It's not a strong acid. So no, it's not gonna affect your mash pH. It doesn't affect your mash pH. You do not need sulfur, three to five grams, and this should cover it. We're done. Um, next person to ask about it on a live stream, you have to donate 20 bucks. All right, like, subscribe, comment, uh, follow our Instagram, our TikTok, our Discord, Ryan's TikTok. There's a lot of pictures of him dancing like very, very skimpy bikinis. So that's pretty cool. And we, uh, we'll see you next time.